Hello guys, welcome to Python and Machine Learning Daily. Today I want to read to you, summarize to you an article, a tutorial we released on our website pythonmldaily.com about PEP8 in Python, about code styling. PEP8 is kind of like a standard style guide in Python. And if you use, for example, PyCharm, you may see some underlinings by PEP8, for example, expected two blank lines after function and you may fix it with adding the second blank line. So things like this one just make your code more readable for others and for yourself in the future. But the code style guide is very long with a lot of rules. So if we go to that page, there's a lot of things to read and to keep in mind. So what is correct or incorrect, optional or more recommended? So in this article, what we did is summarizing kind of the main things, the most common things, the most oftenly used and valuable things from that style guide. And also kind of a disclaimer that style guide is just a guide. It's not a set of rules. The goal is to help Python developers to communicate with each other in a better way. So all that you will hear in a minute, it's just an optional style guide, but you may structure your code differently as long as you keep one standard in all of your code, especially within your team. And this is a classical example. This is without style guide, and this is with style guide. This is much more readable, isn't it? So let's go through those recommendations of most commonly used style guide options. First, blank lines between functions. This is what I just demonstrated a minute ago. According to the standard, there should be two blank lines between the functions or after the functions. This kind of shows to the person who is reading the code that this is actually a function. The second thing, imports at the top, especially when working with machine learning projects in Jupyter Notebook, for example, sometimes it feels cool to import some library like scikit-learn or something like that immediately as you need it in the middle of the script, which does work and you can do imports whenever you want. But a better way according to the standard is to put everything on top so that other people reading that code would know which libraries are required. Of course, even better way is to have requirements.txt file but if you don't, providing imports on top allows other people to quickly run pip install on all of those and continue running that script. Also related to importing, another style guide thing is do not import one by one with a comma. It is possible, but a recommended way to have this because it's easier than to process that information for other developers. But if you're importing from one module different functions, then it is okay to have comma separated list. Then naming conventions, some guidelines for naming variables, classes, and functions. For example, variables should be lowercase and separated with underscores. For example, method names, this method name and variables should follow the same thing, whereas classes should be in camel case. And final kind of a small thing, but I noticed that quite often in the code of other developers, this thing comparing to true or false directly instead you just do if x and tools like pycharm would show you that as something to improve and yeah apart from that there are a lot of rules but they are not that important at least from my experience and in general this is a quote that code style is just a guideline the style guide is about consistency so whatever you write in your code, be consistent in your projects or in projects of your team, and then it will make life easier for all of you. I will link that original article in the description of this video and subscribe to the channel to get more Python tips like this one with simplification of some Python syntax and rules. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.